So one of the assumptions in the uh, Hectoralink framework that is often glossed over, but actually turns out to be pretty important, is an assumption of what's called homothetic taste. Now, this is sort of obscure uh, econ jargon, uh, but actually has a it's very, uh, very simple idea. So homothetic taste, officially or uh, formally, is basically says that if you increase in income to consumers and you keep relative prices the same, then you're going to consume the same combination of, of goods. So income goes up, prices don't change, you, pr you consume more of, of both goods, but you do so in the, same, in the same combination. So you don't change that. Now, what that gets us in terms of an analytical uh, power is that it means that the size of a, a country's income doesn't change, uh, doesn't provide really a basis for any, uh, any trade. But it's, so it's going to keep things quite um, simple to draw and to analyze if we make this assumption about homothetic tastes. So it's sim the simple size of an economy uh, and is not going to drive relative prices and doesn't, uh, because it doesn't change uh, demand. Okay, so if we have a simple indifference curve where this line is the budget constraint and the slope of that budget constraint is the relative prices, we have a combination of Y and X associated with that utility with income, with relative prices. So again, the slope of that that blue line is the uh, is the is the relative prices, and um, we have an uh, income associated uh, with that. So let's imagine that something has increased income, but prices have not changed. Okay, so we've got a new income level. So the slope of that green line is equal to the slope of the blue line. So there's no change there. So we know generally if, if, uh, if income goes up that um, consumers are going to buy more of, of something. Uh, the homothetic taste says that they buy more of both things in a particular way. In particular, the consumption is going to go up by the same proportion. Now for those of you who've had uh, intermediate micro, that's, you're, you're basically talking about an income expansion path that stays, that's, that's constant, or that's, that's linear through the uh, origin. So if that doesn't mean anything to you, that's fine. But let's imagine that Y1 was 5 and X1 was four, and there's been an increase in income. Okay, so that's this initial point here. Homothetic taste means that if I get an increase income and I have the same trade-off in prices for the two goods, that you might have 10 and eight. So I expand my income I keep prices constant, I consume the two goods in the same, same proportion. And if I increased income a lot, I'm still going to have this same 5 to 4 uh, ratio between the two. Now, if you think about this for a second, this homothetic taste is actually the, the analog to constant returns to scale on the production side. Because remember there, we said that if you expanded the use of inputs by the same proportion, output increases by that same proportion. Essentially, homothetic tastes are a way of saying, if I increase my consumption of both goods, okay, utility is going to increase proportionally, equivalently, keep the relative price the same, increase income, I consume goods in the same in the same proportion. Now it turns out that these homothetic tastes 
is that's a, a stronger assumption than you need to to ensure that the heterolean framework uh, has has clear predictions. Um, but it's a useful one because it allows you to um, uh, pin down some of the some of the results. So it's a stronger than necessary assumption, but one that is formally made in a standard heterolean framework. And we're going to use this, uh, for example, when we talk about um, factor endowment uh, increase, uh, say immigration or foreign direct investment in a heterolean in the uh, the last uh, the last couple of modules for the course. So keep this one in mind, both for heterolean and also for the last couple of um, uh, sections of the course. Okay, thank you.